wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa salama tasliman kathira wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh thumma amma ba'd we want to inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala to give some reminders in the blessed month of ramadan من صلى الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل منا سيامنا أن يتقبل منا سيامنا وقيامنا وصايع أعمالنا صالحا آمين. Today, إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى, I want to talk about some points around the issue of fasting. إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى. One of them will be around the one who has relationships in the daytime of Ramadan, sexual relationships. The other, we want to talk about the issue of eating and drinking in the daytime of Ramadan. Al Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, Wakulu washrabu hata yatabayyan alakum al khaytu al abyadu min al khaytu al aswadi min al fajr. ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى الليل. The first thing Al-Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentioned is the staying away from eating and drinking in the time in the daytime of fasting in the daytime of fasting Al-Tabarak wa Ta'ala he said وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا and eat and drink حَتَّى يَتَّبَيَنَ لَكُمْ until it becomes clear to you the appearance, as the ulama have explained this verse, of the dawn from the darkness of the dawn. As dawn has two things. And the fajr fiha dilu fiha barakallahu fikum ad Yani, from amongst it, the fajr has a darkness. Fajr has a darkness. And from amongst the fajr, it also has the appearance of light. So when it becomes clear to you that it's fajr, because you see the light of fajr, and Tabarakul wa Ta'ala said, eat and drink up until that time. And then after that, what happens? When you realize the lightness of fajr, this means that the first appearance of light, whether it be a streak, whether it be a little bit of light behind the darkness, then a little bit more and a little bit more as we say daytime is appearing. The first sign of light that tells you it's fajr. A streak in the sky or the sky itself becomes a little lighter than not. Then this is the issue of eating and drinking until that appears. This is the the dough on the har, the light of the fajr. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned... Then complete your siyam. Complete your siyam, your fasting. Meaning, you yourself fast all over again until it becomes the time where you break your fast. And that is al maghrib So this is from the book of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The prohibition clearly of not eating and drinking in the daytime of Ramadan. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bayyana hadha fi hadith in kithira, lamma qal, man lam yadda'a qawdun zuhr, man lam yadda'a qawdun zuhr, fa inna Allah ha, fa laysa lillahi hajatan lahu in yadda'a ta'amu wa sharabu. Naam, kama qal, whoever does not leave off vain speech, Whoever does not leave off vain speech, lying, bearing witness to something that's falsehood, whether it be with the eyes or the tongue or the ears, whoever does not leave that off, for in the lace of the haja and yet the ta'ama who was sharabahu, then Allah does not have any need for that person to just leave off his food and drink while he is still indulging in. Listening, watching, or saying that which is from called the Zur. Zur, bi ma'na batil. The ulama says Zur 
In Arabic here, the meaning is batila, things of falsehood. وَفِي رِوَايَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَنَبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالَ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ وَالْجَهْلِ And another word in the Prophet added to cold and zur, false speech, either borne witness by eyes, ears, or tongue. He also added in another narration to this to show the extent of that which is fasting for the believer. Also desires. He does not leave off his shahwat. And what will explain to you what is shahwat? Shahwat huna bi ma'na al-ma'asi. Huna shahwat bi ma'na al-ma'asi. The word shahwat here doesn't mean the desire to do something only, but it means the desire to do that which is wrong. كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم فأما من فأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى and as for he who fears he's afraid of the standing before his Lord on the day of judgment the scenery of يوم القيامة he's afraid of the environment of the day of standing, Yom Al-Qiyamah. He's afraid of what he may receive in his book on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. He's afraid that maybe his deeds may not be accepted and he'll see that on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. He's afraid that he may be raised up with the disobedient people and those who <clears throat> may shirk to Allah. He's afraid that when it comes to going across the very, very thin line called the Sirat, he may not make it. He may be flung off into the fire. He's afraid that Allah may give him the verdict of the hellfire. Whoever is afraid of all of that, then the cure for being in those situations of fear on that day, then the cure for being amongst those people is that he avoids his Hawa. He stays away from doing that which is bad. So, here in the hadith, يعني, والشهوات, it means the desire to do the bad things. Whoever does not leave off vain speech, number one. And he does not leave off ma'asiyah, number two. jahl and ignorance. فَإِنَّ لَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَنْ لَهُ أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Then Allah has no need for him to just leave off his food and drink. هنا يعني Allah Azza wa Jal ليس محتاج لشيء Allah here is not in need of anything. So here Allah is not in need of doesn't mean Allah needs it from you like we need something. Here it means أن الله لا يكبل منك that Allah will not accept from you that you don't eat and drink, but you do these other things. And not that Allah needs you, yani, that Allah is harmed by you, that it yani, diminishes Allah, or like this. As when we're in need, then sometimes it diminishes us, sometimes that we're hurt by things, if we don't get it when we need it. This is not the meaning of haja, the need here in the word, haja, then Allah is in no need. It is not meant like that. It means Allah will not accept from you. Allah does not need or want from you to do that alone. Rather, He wants you to do them collectively. Leave off food, leave off drink, leave off cold and sore, leave off that which is sin, and leave off that which is jahl. The ulama, they mentioned along the lines of this eating and drinking, swallowing and so forth, that it includes the purposely swallowing of anything. Shaykh Abdul Rahman Maysani mentioned this in his explanation of Madab the Salikin by Imam al Sa'di, the famous book, The Way of Those Who Want to Tread the Path of Righteousness, the part in the book about fasting. The Shaykh he talked about this and he mentioned that if a person was to take something, 
a piece of wood, miswhack, a piece of tree, bark, wood, something that's not considered food substance because the clause here is that people think eating and drinking refers to naturally what we eat and drink. No one eats wood. No one drinks wood. We eat meat, we eat vegetables, we eat different type of fruits and sweets and so forth. So a person may think that anything else is okay, as long as it's not food and drink. But here, the sheikh is making the point that no, anything purposely ingested, as you know, ta'am and sharab, or necessities, ta'am, food, sharab, drink. But the ruling surrounded around purposely putting something in the mouth and ingesting that thing in the daytime of Ramadan is inclusive in breaking the fast. So much so, the Shaykh mentioned that some ulama, they said, it also includes a person's saliva. If a person gathers in his mouth saliva. And sometimes this happens when you didn't eat for a long time, the mouth gets watery. He said, even that saliva, if you gather it in the front of your mouth, you can't swallow it. Except that it is in the category, it will break your fast. Well, how could that zukham? Naam, and also they say zukham, yani, which is mucus. Someone has phlegm in the back of his throat. It's in the back of his throat. You hear the people say, <coughs> like this, or they're coughing. He's trying to get out of the back of his throat. If that phlegm becomes loose in the back of his throat, the sheikh said he has to spit it out. He has to discard it. Why? Because if he swallows it, it falls into the ruling of swallowing or eating, or consuming, or drinking something in the daytime of Ramadan. So the point here is that your saliva, yani, وَبَابَكَ ماذا الفلم, Do not swallow it in the daytime of Ramadan. Get rid of it. Go spit it out. Also, the Sheikh he mentioned, this is not just one way. It relates to things that you put in the mouth, and it goes down the body to the stomach. Rather, this is inclusive of things that you eject from the body as well. And this is why the ulama they mention if a person um medan, yani right is a throw up. So if a person he throws up purposely, although he's not putting the throw up, the vomit in his mouth, the same way you will put food and drink, although he's not gathering vomit in his mouth from the beginning of his tongue, the first part of his mouth where the opening is, and he's swallowing it towards the back of the throat, down to the stomach, although this action is not taking place, the fact that he's bringing something up from the stomach, up to the throat, out of the mouth, then the reverse ruling of something going out of the mouth is applicable to something coming in the mouth in the daytime of Ramadan. So, whether it's something going out of the mouth, coming from the stomach, or something going in the mouth, going down to the stomach, any one of these things happen purposely, you break your fast. Any one of these things happen purposely, a person, he breaks his fast. Now, and likewise, when you talk about candy and gum and or pills, medicine, just because you didn't chew it and it didn't go from the beginning of the tongue to the middle of the tongue to the back of the throat and then down, you threw it to the back of the mouth. It's in the throat. It's not in the mouth anymore. It's in the throat. If you swallow that, it still breaks your fast. So it doesn't make a difference if you, the method of ingesting. If it's in the mouth and it goes to the back of the throat and down, to the stomach, purposely it breaks the fast. If it's something that comes from the stomach, such as vomit, up through the throat, out of the mouth, then purposely it breaks the fast. Now, this is why many of the ulama they mentioned Allahu fikum that the person should not rinse the mouth during the fasting. And that also, some people they say, and they, 
لا ينبغي استعمال ماذا الأشياء يعني من النظافة منفضات للفم that you, you, you abstain from you abstain from using the things that you clean your mouth with such as toothpaste mouthwash and the likes it's okay to use but they say because of the possibility of uh, swallowing something then you should avoid it but here the clause is swallowing something intentionally purposely From amongst the exceptions, Mubarakah Allahu Fikum, Mada Al For the one who's traveling, as they mentioned. Falahu Ikhtiyar and Yasuma Al Yaftaru. For the one who's traveling, he has the choice to keep his fast or break his fast. He has the choice to Keep his fast, which means he will not eat or drink purposely. Or to break his fast, which means he or she would eat or drink purposely. وَهَكَدْ عَلْ مَرِيدْ لَذِينَ لَا يَرْجُوا لَا يَعْنِي لَا يَرْجُوا بَرْعَ Those ulama, they say, the one who has a sickness and he does not respect to return back to good health from that sickness. Meaning he does not expect that his condition will better. Then for him, he can't fast. So he's going to feed for each day that he does not fast. He cannot you know, make up the day because he can't even fast in Ramadan. So how will he make up the days at another time? His health will not allow him. Her health will not allow her. So they automatically they go to feeding a person. And thus they will be able to eat and drink in the daytime of Ramadan. This is an exception. Now, وَهَكَدَ بَابَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمْ We said from the exceptions, أَدْمَرَ عَلَى حِيدٍ وَنِفَاسٍ A lady that in Ramadan, she happens to bleed from the normal menstrual cycle. Or she's bleeding because she had a baby prior. Then for that lady, she can eat and drink in the daytime of Ramadan, and there is no sin upon her. وَهَكَدَ الَّذِينَ يَرْجُوا لَهُمْ يعني مَاذَا بْرَعْ مِنَ الْمَرْدْ بَعْدَ الْرَمَضَانِ فَلَهُمْ يعني عند مَاذَا الْفَطُورُ الْأَكُبْ وَالشَّرَابْ مُتَعَمِدًا فِي النَّهَا رَمَضَانِ And likewise, the one who expects to recover sometime after Ramadan from a sickness, but he or she has broken the fast because of a temporal sickness, then that person, of course, they can eat and drink purposely in the daytime of Ramadan. Question. Should a person eat and drink in front of others with a valid excuse not to fast? Should a person eat and drink in front of others, meaning who are fasting, with a valid excuse for themselves not to fast? And if a person sees someone eating and drinking, should he tell him that it's Ramadan, brother, you should be fasting, or should he leave him? The scholars, they differ on this. Some of them, they say that the Prophet ﷺ, he drank in front of the people while he was fasting in Ramadan, broke his fast. And they say this shows that a person can do that. That a person can, uh, ma'adha, he can fast and then break his fast in front of people in the daytime of Ramadan. Or that that person who's not fasting can eat and drink in front of others, although he's not fasting. Because the Prophet ﷺ did that. When he was fasting and traveling, he broke his fast وسلم, in front of the believers while they were fasting. So many of the scholars, they mentioned that this is allowed because the Prophet himself, he did that. Others say that 
does it is advisable not to others say that it is advisable not to eat and drink in front of others because of the issue of tafwish ban the nas tafwish ban the nas al yakun and ibabak allah fikum mashakil ban the nas al so you could true bahat al fitna bainahum because tafwish is to cause commotion confusion suspicion yani mashakil yani problems yeah, and he shoot hot. Things that are not clear. So all of these things are against the religion. The religion is against Shubhat. The religion is a religion of clarity, not suspicion. And we don't mean al tabarakul wa ta'ala allowing some suspicion to be warned. We mean that person shouldn't do things to make people wonder about him or her. They should keep their honor and the good standing, because Allah has given you a good honor just in being a Muslim. So a person shouldn't create for himself or herself a situation where people will look or think of them in a bad way. This is why the Prophet Sallam he said, "Man sattah al Muslim, man sattah Allah alayhi fi dunya wal akhirah." Whoever shields the salt, the fault, whoever shields the fault, the sin of the Muslim. Then Allah will shield that person in this life and the hereafter because it's his reputation. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa ala ali wa sallam aqal, al Muslimun al Bunyan shudduhum ba'dahum ba'da. That the Muslims are like a solid structure. Each one supports the other. This is how you support the Muslim by covering the sins of the Muslim. Illa idha kan istithna. مثلا ذهاب إلى القاضي للفتوى except there is an exception like you go to a person to get a question to answer fatwa you want to know is it permissible to do this or if it's not permissible to do that أو شخص هو ظالم لك or you have a person that's oppressing you so you go to get help from the authorities أو إذا كان واحد يدعو مسلمين إلى يعني ماذا شرعه or a person he's inviting the Muslim to his evil sin. Or a person he's deceiving the people in their religion. Or a person he's broadcasting his sins. إِلَّا غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ مِنْ إِسْتِثْنَاءٍ فَيَكُونُ يَعْنِي مُبَاحٍ And you have a shay in men or rati akhik. From amongst these things are the exceptions that a person may say something that's a shortcoming about another person. But in general, you cover the Muslim. And the reason we mention this to make clear the honor of the Muslim is important. So therefore, many of the scholars along these lines, they have mentioned, that the person should not eat and drink around the people that are fasting, although he has a legitimate excuse, because it will make people look at him, make people look at her, it will make people have confusion, it will make people have bad statements and thoughts about them, it will make people confused, as to the situation at hand. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi a man came to him as the second part that we want to talk about before the time elapsed, the intercourse in the daytime. We handled the issue of eating and drinking food and other items going down the throat purposely in the daytime of Ramadan, and we cover the exceptions. Now I want to talk about the statement of Al-Tabarakul wa Ta'am, say, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوا هُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمِسَاجِدِ تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقَرَبُوهَا So do not have relations with them. Addressing the man in Itikaf. Itikaf 
is the taqaf al-nas fi masajid, when the people seclude themselves in the masjid, in the time of Ramadan. Allah said, and do not have relations with them while you are secluding yourself in the masjid. Now this can be taken literally and figuratively. Meaning in the masjid itself, do not use the masjid like a hotel and have some relations with your wife in the masjid. Or it could mean, do not leave the masjid, go have relationships with your wife in nighttime and then come back to the masjid and stay in the masjid with the rest of the people secluding yourself the rest of the night until the morning. No. Seclusion in the masjid is to be done without having relationship with his spouse. So here the Prophet when the man came to him, he said, Masjid of Allah, I am destroyed. Halak to nafsi. I have destroyed myself. The Prophet said, what has destroyed you? He said, I had relation. I had relation with my wife fi Nahari Ramadan, in the daytime of Ramadan. This means purposely. This means purposely. So the Prophet said to him, فَتَحْرِرُوا قَبَى Can you free a slave? And the man here, can you free a slave, was mentioned to him because this was something Allah legislated for sins. To help get rid of the issue of slavery. As everybody was involved in slavery during that time. It was not a Atlantic, Pacific, American, the story of roots type of philosophy. No. Slavery was a world commodity and other people were involved besides people of African descent. Asians, Arabs, Caucasians, you name it. Everybody was doing it. Thus Allah dealt with in the Quran and one of the ways for a sin that a person does killing someone or the issue in this case having relations with the wife or the husband the daytime of Ramadan then the first thing to relieve the sin to clean the slate of that sin free a slave the man he said he's not able to as freeing the slave entails you go to the one who has the slave in the time you say how much is the slave and he tells you the price and you purchase it or you say, I want to sleep free however many slaves, 40 slaves. As Aisha did one particular time, she freed 40 slaves. Meaning you purchase them. Now those people become part of you. You can have them do and work and so forth. But rather than do that, you say, you are free to go. You emancipate them, but you have to purchase them first. So the man said no. So if I told him, that he has to fast shahrain mutatabi'ain. As siyam shahraini mutatabi'aini. Fast two months consecutively. And in the Islamic calendar, from our deen, we understand month is 29 and 30 days. And Prophet Sallam, kana yataza ala nisahi, kana tisa wa ishreen yawman, tisa wa ishreen ayam. The Prophet stayed away from his wives. He vowed to stay away from them from a whole for a single month. Aisha said to him when he came, You said the month. He said, Verily, the month Aisha is 29 or 30 days. Verily, the month is 29 or 30 days, meaning this month is 29 days. Thus, he came back home after the 29 days. So here 29 days could be a month. Doesn't mean you do 30 and 30. It could be 29 and 30, depending on if the month is 29 and 30 days. It could be 29 and 29, depending on if they spot the hilal. Here the point is consecutively. You don't do one month, take a three month break, and then do the other month. La, ni means consecutively, back to back, without a break. And the Except that the break between them is necessity legislated by Allah Azza wa Jal. They give the example, for example, Psalm ala yawm al Eid. Psalm ma'adha ala yawm al Eid. Fasting on the day of Eid is prohibited. 
No one can fast on the day of Eid. Therefore, if a person is doing two months back to back, and he starts, for example, in Dhul Qa'da, which is the month after Shawwal, which Shawwal is the month after Ramadan. So he has relations with his wife in the daytime of Ramadan purposely. He says, I'm going to start making up my expiation for Ramadan. Or actually, I'm going to do my kafara. I'm going to do my kafara, the particular thing you have to do to get the sin off, this month. When it happens to be the Qa'da, then he's going to fast all of the Qa'da. 29 days if they spot the moon. If they don't spot the moon, complete 30 calendar. Then he's going to go right into the next day, awwal the hijjah the first of the Hijjah, which is the Hajj month. And as he comes to Yom Al-Eid, he will have to break. As we mentioned, it's prohibited to fast on the day of Eid. However, the scholars say right after the Eid, right after Yom Al-Eid, he should go back to completing the fast as he has to do consecutive fasting. Now, وَهَكَدْ لِكَانْ مَرْعَ لَا حَيْلَ أَوْنَ فَاسْ They say, and likewise, if there is a lady bleeding from her menses or post-bleeding. Well, actually, they mention, Babaka uh, Lofikum, I should correct this. This is a slip of the tongue of me. Um, the menses. They do not mention post-bleeding. Only the menses. If a lady is doing the fast of kefara, she willingly had intercourse with her husband in Ramadan, she has to do the same as him. Free a slave. She's not able to fast two consecutive the month. If her body is able, she's strong enough. And she's not sickly. So she's fasting that month, and then her menses come. She would break because of the menses, and then as soon as her menses is over, go back to fasting the rest of that month and the next month to come, which makes it mutatabi'in, back to back consecutively. The scholars they mention, if a person was to make his or her own fasl ubayn the huma, they were to break between the two months themselves without a legitimate excuse from the sharia, from the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they will have to start all over from a beginning, from a new fasting two consecutive months. So this is the danger of playing with the issue of fasting two consecutive months. You yourself earn yourself the liberty to start all over Allah Musta'an. If that person is not able to, like the man he said, he's not able, person body might be weak, you can't play with Allah, but there is some legitimacy if a person knows they can't fast two months back to back, then they have to feed Satina Miskina, feed 60 poor people. And the ulama, they say, it doesn't make a difference you feed Talatin, Tumma Talatin. Feed 30, which is, that's the meaning of Talatin. Then you feed another 30, two months, three months later. It's, a, it's okay. As long as you feed 60 and 60 in total. If you feed Ashura, 10. Ashura, 10. Ashura, 10. 10 times 3 is 30. You do that, you know, I need mean, one month, two months, three months. You feed 10 people every month for six months. That's 60 people. Khalas, la best. Or if you want to feed them all at one time, all 60. Khalas, the Jews. Hala your juice or that your juice. This is okay and that's okay. Like in Lazim and your Kuomina Masakin. But however, they must be from the poor. And we mentioned many times, poor doesn't mean a guy has a hole in the bottom of his shoe with cardboard and he has no place to stay and he has one pair of pants and two shirts and one of them is holy. No, this is not the definition of poor here. Poor, and he means in, in our society today, Poor. Some people work every day and they're poor, meaning they don't always have what they need, meaning they may be without it sometimes. They don't have you know, a surplus, something piled up. They're barely making it. Alhamdulillah, lacking this is the mean of Masakin. So, the Prophet mentioned this to the man who came and said, I am destroyed, which shows that intercourse in the daytime of Ramadan is prohibited, as the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala said. And don't have relations with them while you are devoting yourself in the daytime and the last 10 days of Ramadan in the masjids. They also mention, the one who does not have the ability to free the slave, 
neither fast two consecutive months, neither they have the ability to feed 60 poor people. As some people don't have the ability. If he's poor, then how can he feed 60 poor people? Then, Prophet in that same hadith, that man denied the ability to do any of the three. The Prophet went, got a barrel of dates and gave it to him, said, go give this in sadaqah. Go give this in sadaqah. So that person would simply give a sadaqah because he's not able to do any of the expiated things that are uh, mandated for the one who has intercourse in the daytime of Ramadan purposely. Then the least, just give some charity. And the ulama, they say, if that person can't even give the charity, can't even find something to give in charity, then the issue of expiation for him, kafara, is yani, lifted. Meaning that this uh, thing that he has to do is dismissed from him because of the lack of ability. As the Tabarakul wa Ta'ala says, Fattakallaha mustata'atum. And do as much in fearing Allah as you are able. Now, Wa haka the Barakallahu fikum as it relates to the lady that's not yani, uh, willing, the husband overpowers her and have relations in the daytime. Then they say for that lady, she must make up her day, but there's no sin on her and she does not have to do kafal. And it may be a man is strong, overpowers the woman or takes advantage while she's sleeping after fajr or whatever. He doesn't control himself. He can't help it. As long as she dislikes it, she was not willing to do it. She told him, stop, fear Allah. You know she should be doing this. And then he does it. There's no sin on her. And she does not have to do the kifara. But she would have to make up that day, as um, the ulama they mentioned. And she should keep her fast. She should keep her fast, meaning remain fasting. And that man who intentionally has the relation with his wife, she should, he should um, remain in the state of fasting. He should keep his fast. She should say, okay, I have relations with my wife. Oh, well, let me get a hoagie. Let me get a salad fries. Hey, babe, can you put some ice in my Coke? Uh, no, let me have sweet tea instead. No. Yani, resume as if you're fasting. Restraint. And this is in all cases. Whether you do something intentionally or unintentionally, the ulama, they say that the person, lazim lahu, yani, ma'da yumsika ala sawme, that he maintains his sawming posture, meaning he remains, if he sees fasting for the remainder of that day. Nah. The ulama there asked uh, What happens if a person has relations multiple times in one day? You have the scenario of a person He has relations with his wife in the daytime of Ramadan Purposely Then we say he has the sin of breaking his fast He has to do kafara He must also continue to fast despite that action he has to make up that day at another time, and we just mentioned again, he has to do um, the kafara. If that person, does it a second time in the day, he does it in the beginning in the morning after Fajr. And then, although her comes, he said, Man, let me go back. And he protects again. Does he have to do kafara? For each act of sex in that day, or is it one kifara for each day? Some ulama, Allah Musta'an, they say each time he does it, he has to do kifara. Well, I can. A jamhur ulama ala anna lahu kifara to lahu madha babaka lofikum kifara tun liyom wahi. Lahu kifara tun liyom wahi. But Majority of the scholars, they say, he has to do expiation for each day that he has intercourse. And not the multiple acts of intercourse in that day, the simple breaking of the day with having relations. Then that day itself inherits one act of kifara and not the multiple acts of intercourse in that day. If he does it, then he has to do the expiation. But if he does the second time, does not add another expiation. 
or a third time in that day, add a third expiation, expiation, pardon me. Only one expiation for each day. While he inherits the sin and he has to make that day up of fasting, he himself only has one kafara for each day. Now, so if a person, he does this in the morning time, we say, then he has kafara, he has broken the fast, and he must maintain his fast, and he must make the day up at another day. But if he does it the second time in that day, then he has sinned because he did not maintain the fast, and he still had intercourse a second time in the daytime of Ramadan, and he must make that day up at another time, but he does not have to do a kifara for the second time that he had sex intentionally in the same day. Now, the question the ulama, they also ask, what if the person makes zina, what ayadhullah, in the daytime of Ramadan? What if the person, yani ma'da yazni fi nahara Ramadan? Then they answer, they say, وَبَارَكَ فِيكُمْ نَعَمْ That that person, he has to do kifara. Fellow kafara, he has to do kifara, free a slave, if not, fast two consecutive months, if not, 60 people, he has to feed its poor, hakata. Also, he has the sin on him for breaking it. And that person, Wallahu Musta'an, gets the hudu. If he's in a Muslim country, he gets the death penalty. For the act of a zina. So here, just because he gets the penalty of a zina, which is the hudud of being um, killed, it doesn't remove him from kifara. He still does the kifara. Then after he settles the kifara, then he will get the hudud, and this will be administered by the courts. Wallah musta'an. What about the issue of purposely ejaculating? Istimta. Naam purposely ejaculating. The ulama mentioned that for this person there's no kifara wala hat la kifara wala hat liman yani fa'ala dhalik. For the one who makes himself ejaculate. For the one who makes himself ejaculate. Whether it be male or female, then there's no hat like the one who does zina. And there's no kifara like the one has intercourse with someone in the daytime of Ramadan. He makes himself or she makes herself uh, ma'da, discharge uh, the sperm. Then they break the fast, number one. Number two, it's a sin on them. But they only have to make up that day. And they ought to maintain their fast like in the other scenarios. Don't say, well, you know, I can eat and drink now. No. But they are to keep the fast. They have earned the sin. They have to make that day up at another time. And they themselves, uh, do not have to do the kifara. Neither do they get the punishment like the one who makes zina. The question was asked to Al-Imam Samaha to Sheikh Al-Allama Abdullah ibn Abdul Aziz ibn Bas Rahimahullah Mufti Aam of Saudi Arabia who died in 1999 Rahimahullah Is it permissible for a person to travel in order to have relations with his spouse or the spouse in the daytime of Ramadan? Yani what we mean by this is that it's prohibited for a person to have relations in the daytime of Ramadan. Now, it's prohibited. Like Salam in the class. It's prohibited for a person to have relations in the daytime of Ramadan. But if a person travels, then that person has the right to keep his fast or break his fast. To keep his fast or break his fast. So the question is asked, can a person say, as a faster that's traveling, then I have the right to break my fast. So I want to travel solely so that I can say, now let me have relations with my wife. The question is uh, to be answered 
Like Sheikh bin Baz answered the question, no. 